far away. Be gentle. I'm always gentle. <laughs> so, against the sun, how the hell did you pull that off? The, the, the war film? Uh, uh, I'm interested because No that one's ever asked me that, yeah. That must be off? challenging. We did it in three weeks in a place called Rosarito, Mexico. Mexico. Mexico, where James Cameron had built tanks to shoot Titanic in. So we, we use the same tanks as, uh, as, as Titanic. That's uh, pretty cool. Yeah, it was fun. Three men in a raft. Uh, it was a good story. We enjoyed it. But you have lost a lot of weight for that movie, no? We did. We did. We were on a crash three-week diet where uh, I mean, I'm not really a big eater anyway. Uh, but they, make, they made you eat every two hours. But just like four grapes. Oh. Or half an apple or three nuts as a way of trying to get your metabolism burning so even even at night you were supposed to wake up have uh, a half a stick of broccoli and then go back to back to bed within within two weeks we lost quite a lot of quite a lot of weight uh, over a stone for me um, so that was fun <laughs> that's uh, that's cool that, i think that was uh, a challenging movie to shoot that definitely it was. It was nice that we were together. It was me and two other boys, so none of us wanted to cheat. We all felt a bit guilty if we cheated. In fact, several days we came in and confessed that we'd eaten five Pringles. Oh, I know, right? How could you? I know, a half a can of Coke. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> um, so that was, it was okay. Every morning we were weighed in front of each other, naked, basically. So we, we were pretty dedicated. You could say, like, oh, yeah, I can see that Pringles. We had a doctor as well to make sure that it was all... Everything was healthy. Well, I didn't realize that there was calories in beer. <laughs> Apparently there is. So we weren't allowed to drink beer either, which was rather upsetting. But, it's yeah. actually a lot of calories. <laughs> I learned that very quickly. It's like one cheeseburger and a beer or something. That's pretty cool. Um, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Yeah. Jesus Christ. James Franco, John Lithgow. That must be a hell of a ride to shoot that movie, no? It was a lot of fun. Andy Serkis, who really is the star of the show, um, he was fantastic to work with. It was the first film that I did outside of Harry Potter. It was the first film I did afterwards. It was great. Uh, it's very weird working with motion capture. You know, so they have all these dots, lights, lasers, and ways of tracking his movement, whereas in, in Harry Potter, it was more just a man with a tennis ball waving it around and saying, look at this, look at this. So it was nice to actually have something practical to look at. But you went from one gigantic franchise to another big franchise because Planet of the Apes, it is a franchise still. So do you think there are similarities between those two or not really? Not really. Uh, that was the first one of its, of its uh, reprise. Uh, Rupert Wyatt was definitely the right director to bring it back. Uh, I have no idea why they cast me. I just felt very lucky. Uh, didn't have to read for it. They just gave me the job. So That's pretty cool. I know. Tell me about it. Yeah, I was very excited. <laughs> Come about on. It. That's yeah. good. Um, and last question from me, and then I'm going to leave the audience to it. Come on. Now you're, uh, now you're in Flash. Flash was a lot of fun, too. Yeah, I was... Um, I was in Hawaii, and they asked me to come and do the show, and I'd never seen it before. Achoo. It was a while ago. It was a while ago. So I, d I said that I would watch two episodes and let them know what I th what I thought, and I ended up watching 38 episodes in two days. And I was like, I'm in. I'm in. That was a great, uh, a great project. A lot of fun. I miss those guys a lot. It is. A, it is a good show. It is a good show. Well, this is from me, and uh, I think it's time to give some time for our lovely audience. Guys, shoot away, shoot away. Hi, Tom. Oh, hello, darling. Hi. First off, thank you so much for coming. I wanted to meet you for so long, and I'm so excited that you're here. Cheers, mate. <laughs> and I hope are you... you... In, are you you're in Slytherin as well? Yes, of okay. course. What well, else? I, I, I love you already. <laughs> are there any Gryffindors in the house? Please leave now. <laughs> I won't be answering any questions from 
<laughs> Sorry, darling, go on. No, it's okay. I hope you like the drawing. Oh, it's fantastic, yes. Fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> My question would be about Harry Potter. <laughs> um, throughout oh, right. uh, the movies, you can kind of tell that Draco is a very misunderstood character. Um, towards the end, you can tell he really doesn't want to do what he has to do. Um, and I saw a scene online um, that unfortunately never made it into the final movie um, and that was when Harry was battling Voldemort and Draco was actually tossing his wand to Harry to help him and um, can you tell us a bit more about those scenes that well never made the yeah. final film? Yeah, there's two I can think of. The first one was Chamber of Secrets. There's a scene with me and Lucius in Borgen and Burks, I think. Or, or it was an extended version of the scene that we've already already got, I think. Uh, that final sequence for Deathly Hallows Part 2, we, we, we filmed that, that scene uh, outdoors in the courtyard for about three weeks. It was a very, very long... <laughs> time doing it. I mean, on the flash, they would have shot it in three hours, but Harry Potter had a bit more, a uh, bit more cash, I suppose. Um, but they did, they shot, they shot a few alternate endings. Not, not alternate endings, but just different, different bits where Neville's character was slightly bigger, or Draco's character was slightly bigger. I mean, I forget, is it written in, the, it's written in the book that he throws the wand, right? Or not? No. So I don't know where they came up with that. Yeah, but well, I thought it was a really cool idea to kind of show that he has a bad conscience about what he has to do for the Death Eaters. And I would have wished for Draco to kind of have a nicer ending, helping the others out at the end. It would have been nice. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your question, you. darling. Cheers. Thank you. Next question, please. Hi. Hello, guten Tag. <laughs> um, I just want to say that you're uh, a wonderful actor and I love your work, so do it for a long time, please. I'll, I'll, I'll try. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Um, my question is, what was it like to find out that Emma Watson had a crush on you? <laughs> I already knew. <laughs> uh, it was very humbling and very sweet. Uh, Emma and I are very close friends. Um, that's all. For now. Are you sure? <laughs> am I blushing? Does it look like I'm... Uh... Yes, I am very sure. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you for the question. Cheers, Next darling. one, please. Hey there, uh, so we all know that Draco is quite a uh, well traveling character and that he has had uh, quite some issues in his life and what do you think as you know the uh, actor who portrayed Draco during the franchise, um, how would Draco uh, could have developed uh, if he hadn't been born into the Malfoy family and just had been a character um, of his own? Just, just him as a character, Draco? Just uh, of his own and not uh, if he hadn't been a Malfoy, you know, with the ba family background and everything. Well, uh, I mean, who knows, really? It's the same with Harry. If he had parents or if Voldemort was slightly nicer. Um, I don't know. Uh, it, it's, de it's definitely a case of two sides of the coin, I think. Harry has no parents but he has a very good moral compass and he has a lot of people to show him what's good and what's bad. Truth, lies, love, hate, all that stuff. He's got a very good idea of that. Draco never really stood a chance because his two parents are arseholes, uh, <laughs> his dad especially. Uh, so I, I think it's only, it's only in the sixth and the seventh film and eighth film that... Um, we get a chance to see that maybe Draco doesn't want to be part of the Malfoy family after all. I think that's why he chooses not to recognize him, um, Radcliffe, Harry, sorry, in, uh, in, in Malfoy Manor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question, please. 
Um, hi. hi. First, I want to thank you that you're here. My pleasure. Just so you know, I'm, I'm, I'm filming around the corner. Well, a couple of hours away from here. Um, so it was very convenient. Hence the... Uh, it's a World War II film. Hence the... Uh, Moustache. And hence the reason... This wound is here because someone dropped a gun on me to, uh, on the first day of filming. So on purpose? No, well, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he was. Maybe he was getting jealous. I don't know. No, it wasn't on purpose. We, we, were, we, were, we were in the water and his gun slipped off of his shoulder and hit me quite squarely in the head. It was a good start. It's a good start. Um, I'm a big fan from Kriddish, so I wanted to ask how it feels to be filmed on a flying broom. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't want to ruin it for you. Uh, I, was, I was asked this at my very first convention by an eight-year-old girl. Uh, what's it like to fly a Nimbus? And I explained what, what it actually was like, and she was very disappointed. So I've learned from then just to say, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. No, it is, it is a lot of fun. It, it is slightly uh, taxing time-wise. It takes a long time to get it all right. Um, and something they never mention in the books, but riding a broomstick is not particularly comfortable. <laughs> a, a solid pole in between your legs is not really enough as a, of a seat, but, but we still enjoyed it for sure. Thank you. Thank you, darling. Thank you so much. Next question, please. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, so nervous. <laughs> um, so, uh, my question is, if you could be any superhero or supervillain, which one would you be? <laughs> DC or Marvel, doesn't matter. <laughs> Can I say Hermione? Or, uh, <laughs> uh, superhero? I'm not particularly good at this question, to be honest with you. Uh, I think... I think Spider-Man, for some reason. That's he's, a good choice. He seems to have a lot of fun. Yeah, for sure. Not too serious. He's quite young. And he can do cool shit, you know. Uh, how about you? Scarlet Witch. Of course, of course. My ass is bad. Yeah, no. It's okay. <laughs> All right, thank you, darling. Thank Bye. you so much. Next question, please. Hi. Oh my gosh. Oh, Hi. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm coming to Germany from Russia because of you. Wow. Okay. Thank you very much for making the journey. <laughs> Bravo. And my question about a very popular idea when Harry really loved Draco Malfoy so much. So what do you think about it? Is it real? Is this, is this dreary? Yeah. It is. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, any pictures that you might have seen we love it. of me and Harry cuddling are not true. We never took pictures. We, we hugged a lot, but uh, no, I don't, I don't really know about that. I think they are, in a way, like I said, two sides of a coin. They could have been best friends. They could have been alliances, but they got off on a bad on the bad foot. Uh, they both complement each other quite nicely. I don't think there was any sexual tension um, that I, I was aware of. But this is, goes on, doesn't it? Because it's Drary, there's Dramine, there's Drapple. Yeah. This one. <laughs> I was only told about this the other week. It's Draco and an apple. Yeah. What's with that? Fans are getting very creative, you know. You know it's very popular too. I do. I've been hearing about it. It's, it's bizarre. Uh, but anything that sparks inspiration is a good thing, so yeah. I don't mind. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you, darling. Safe travels back to Russia. <laughs> Thank you so much. Next question, please. Hi. Hi. Talking to you feels like so unreal right now. I'm very friendly, I promise. But I'm not gonna lie, like, just Emma had the biggest crush on you ever, it's okay. Thanks, darling. Um, but I actually wanted to ask you, which was the most uncomfortable scene, or even, like, hardest scene for you to shoot? 
Um, I mean, they were all they were all fun, definitely. Um, I suppose the most awkward moment I had, well, other than forgetting lines, there was a couple of times where I forgot, I couldn't say the the, the, the lines right. Yeah, really. So they ended up cutting those <laughs> from the film, obviously. Uh, but the other one was that we were just talking about doing the that the final the final scene for uh, Deathly Hallows Part Two in the courtyard where you know Death Eaters and then the students yeah. and then Voldemort in the middle. We shot that so many times. Uh, this the, the walk, Draco walks from the, the good side to the bad side. R Rafe uh, Voldemort never touched me. Never touched. Me. Yeah. And then and then out of nowhere in one take he just went and just came over. And gave me a hug, and you'll see in my face in the in the edit. Yeah. It was so awkward. I had no idea that was not in the script. Uh, he just did his own thing. I was amazed they used it. Uh, yeah. It's funny as well because if you watch it in Europe, that moment is very chilling. People find it quite scary. In America, it's hilarious. They think it's the funniest thing they've ever seen. So different audiences, I suppose. But yeah, that was pretty awkward. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks, darling. Thank you so much. Next question, please. Hi, Tom. Hey, mate. You uh, right? I think I'm the only guy in this line, but... Uh, <laughs> That's what I did. <laughs> yeah. I like uh, Harry Potter, but my question is for The Flesh. I love this show, and I wanted to, to ask you uh, how do you get this role, and how... It, how it was to work with the others because your role as Julian Albert was like a jerk in the beginning. You were rude to Barry, and I wanted to ask you if you liked it or not. Yeah, I loved it. Has anyone seen The Flash here? Yeah. No fans of Flash. Yeah. It's cool, man. It's cool. People. Yeah. Um, I was asked to join the show, and the character wasn't really written then. He only had two two episodes, um, okay. with the intention that he would be Doctor Alchemy and then come back as uh, as part of Team Flash. Mm -hmm. uh, it was fun. I, I, I've never been on a job like it, to be honest with you. On the first day of filming for my character, <laughs> I'd asked them three or four times, "What accent?" Where do you want him to be from? Is he American? Is he Swedish? Is he English? Like, what is he? And they just sort of said, eh, you know, whatever. And then, even on the day of filming, I asked the director, "What accent do you want me to do?" You want me to do? He was like, "Well, you know, just do whatever you want." So, so the first take, I just did it in British in English accent. And then they rewrote the entire thing to say this English heritage and my family back in. Uh, in London or whatever, so it was quite bizarre, really, to do that, but it was a lot of fun. Grant Gustin, the, the guy who plays The Flash, yeah. he's a very, very good friend of mine, and uh, he's so good at his job. You know, this man works for 10 months of the year, 14-hour uh, days, non-stop, you know, non-stop, and he's, and he's done it for six years, and he's still is enthusiastic about it, so I will pass on your praise, because he'll be... He'll be uh, Pleased to hear there are fans in Germany that enjoy his work. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, Brute. Thank you so much. Next question, please. Hello. Hi, oh, uh, Team Flash as well. <laughs> yes, whoop, whoop. yes. I want you to ask you something about the Flash too. Far away. Um, do you want to return at the Flash? And if you would, um, what's about the relationship between Julian and Caitlin? What do you think will happen? Ooh. Um, so you were asking, would I come back, or if they've asked me to come back? Um, yeah. Would you come back, and are there any plans to come back? Well, I've nudged them a few times because I've worked in Vancouver and said I'm here, like let's <laughs> let's do something. Uh, but it hasn't happened yet. But would I come back? Absolutely. Julian Albert's story was never really finished. And his little uh, crush with Caitlin was never explained, really. So, yes, I'm nudging them to, to bring me back for a few episodes in the in the last season. We'll see. Thank you very much. Thanks, darling. Thank you. Next question, please. Hi. Hello. Um, I 
just want to know what's your biggest dream? My biggest dream? To have a big farm with lots of retired animals. You know, like pigs that don't want to be eaten or horses that don't want to be ridden anymore. And I just have animals everywhere. And a thousand dogs. <laughs> that would be amazing. I don't really know what else to dream of. Yeah. Thank you. That and for my mum to be happy. Aww. About it. Hey, uh, I have two things. One, what is your opinion about Professor Snape? Okay, let's start with that one. And I have something for you and Willow, a present. Can I give it to you? You can, absolutely. You'll do that first, okay. Okay. It's not a bomb, is it? <laughs> Thank you, darling. They've asked me not to do that, so, but thank you. I really appreciate the mystery box. Is it safe? Who knows? But thank you. And what was the question? Sorry? What's your opinion about Professor Snape? <laughs> about to fucking go, I think. This. Uh, do what now? What's my opinion on, on Professor Snape? He's a miserable sod. <laughs> um, how do you mean, sorry, my opinion? As an, as an actor, Alan Rickman? As a teacher. As a teacher. Uh, he's quite stern. He speaks slowly. <laughs> and he's quite monotone. But, uh, yeah, not my favourite teacher. But not the worst either. Okay. Thank you, darling. Thanks for the present as well. That's very kind. Tom and Willow. I'll make sure she gets it. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm not so good in English. I'm sorry. But I've heard that you and Matthew Lewis, the actor from Neville, are mates. How does your friendship start and have you when and when have you met him last time? Talking about Matt Lewis? Yes. And him. Uh, are we and you. Are we friends? Yes. Very, very close friends, yes. I've seen him quite a lot. He used to live around the corner from me, so we're, uh, we're very good friends, yes. Thank you. Thank you, darling. And you're a good actor. I'm a good ape. Actor. Actor, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Danke schön. Hi, Tom. Hi, um, darling. My question is, uh, which scene was your favorite one to shoot in Harry Potter? Which what now? Which scene would I... Uh, was your favorite one? <sighs> oh, that's a good one. Um... It's hard to pick one, really. I, re I, I enjoyed very much in the uh, Chamber of Secrets, there's a, uh, a, a dueling scene between Harry and Draco on the, uh, on the long table. That was fun, because we got hooked up with wires and uh, we were thrown in the air, and that was fun. Half-Blood Prince blowing up the bathroom with, uh, with, with Daniel. Because most of the times, I hope this doesn't ruin it for you, but... Most of the times when you did a spell, nothing happened. <laughs> so it was nice to be in a room where you did a spell and then the toilet blew up, you know, so it made it a lot more fun for us. Those are two that off the top of my head I think of, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Next question, please. Okay. Um, hi, Tom. Hi. <laughs> um, I have a question. What was the funniest moment at the set of Harry Potter? The funniest moment. Uh, I mean, I wish I'd written all this down so I would know. Uh, funniest moment. There were several, I don't know about funniest moment, but uh, there were several times where people couldn't stop laughing. We had a jar on set called the red card jar. And it meant if for whatever reason they had to stop a take because of you, then you had to put 10 pounds into the uh, red card jar. Uh, Rupert, Rupert put about 2,000 pounds in there. I'm not joking. It, it all went to charity, of course. Uh, but he couldn't stop laughing. But once, once Rupert had the giggles, that was it. Like we, would just, we would just go over and over and over again because he couldn't stop laughing. And of course, when he can't stop laughing, none of us can stop laughing. So it goes on and on and on. I forget what about. Probably nothing important at all, but uh, we did laugh a lot. <laughs> 
thank you and I want to say that I'm just in Slytherin because of you. I missed that. So you, you're what? You're what because of me? Um, I'm just in Slytherin because ah, of you. Damn, skip. Some with some good taste. Finally, thank you. <laughs> Love you. Thank you so much. Next question, please. Hi, Tom. Hello. It's so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Like, it's really surreal. You're my favorite actor in Harry oh. Potter. Oh, thank Draco you. is my favorite character in the books, in the movies. Cheers, mate. You're amazing. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, when you started on Harry Potter, you were very, very young. You were all kids, so I was wondering, do you remember the first time really shooting for the movie on camera? Were you nervous? Were you all nervous? What was the atmosphere there? <laughs> I'd done a couple of films before that, so I sort of okay. knew what was going to happen. Okay, uh, so were you nervous the first time you ever were on camera? No, because I was seven. You know, okay. Seven-year-olds don't really get too nervous. Uh, we were just mucking around. I, me I remember, that no but none of us were nervous. I, the first thing we ever did, I recall, was coming off of uh, the Hogwarts Express to the platform at night. It was the first time that Hagrid meets. Uh, first, sorry, the first time that Hagrid sees uh, Harry at. Uh, the first time they came to Hogwarts. They, exactly. There yeah. you go. Yeah. And then the first scene I remember doing was um, walking into the Great Hall for the first time, and that was how unnervous we were because the director was very clever and just wouldn't let us see the Great Hall until the cameras were rolling. So all of the reactions of like, wow, 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 they're just real reactions. There's no acting involved at all, really. Uh, Chris Columbus was a master of tricking tricking uh, kids into thinking they were just having fun, which, which it felt like, really, yeah. Thank you. Thank you and darling. one more thing. I was oh, wondering, wait. as an actor, What's like the biggest thing you want to accomplish? Do you have like a dream or anything? Or like a dream role or something you James really want to do? <laughs> no, it, it used to be it, it used to be a James Bond villain. I wanted to play the bad guy, like stroke a cat and just sort of be evil. Um, but now, I don't know, uh, film, TV, music, comics, whatever, has had such an impact on my life. Uh, it's changed my life. Uh, makes me enjoy life <laughs> a lot more. So as long as I'm doing that, contributing to to that, then I'm I'm very happy. Uh, I don't mind if 99 people think the film was terrible, but one person's life has changed forever because that's what it was like for me growing up. So. Well, I hope we get to see you in a lot of <laughs> lot more of TV and. Fingers shows. crossed. I'll keep trying. Thank you. Thank you, darling. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Next question, please. Hi, Tom. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Mom. Um, my question for <laughs> Yeah, I'm still angry about that comment before. Uh. Uh, <laughs> what I wanted to know uh, is who on the set of Harry Potter did you feel the most connected to? Uh, <laughs> I mean, we, we were all very good friends, to be honest with you. It sounds cliche, but we were. I mean, my two Slytherin counterparts, Josh Herbin and Jamie Whaler, Crab and Goyle. I spent most of the time with them uh, growing up. But um, you know, Daniel, we all hung out kind of separately. We weren't sort of one big group. I'm hanging out with Daniel and Rupert and Emma. Emma, I was, I was very close with Emma um, and still am. Uh, so yeah, we were lucky to have that, I think. We were all, we were all pretty close. And then as I got older, the adults came in. Jason Isaacs, plays my dad, your husband. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> he, he's, he's one of my dearest friends as well. Um, he taught me a lot and, uh, and treated me like his own son, which was, which was very nice. Yeah, I was, always see this on his uh, Instagram posts. Yes, we, we, we slightly have we're a bit bromance together a little bit, yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Thank you. Next question, please. What happened to your arm? Hi Tom. Hi. What happened to you? Oh, no. oh nothing. I'm just, I'm just Eddie from it. Oh. Yeah. Oh my God, it feels so nice to talk to you. <laughs> What's up, lover? Uh, I wanted to know if you've had a childhood hero or a role model you always wanted to be like. 
think I had like a childhood hero. I think uh, there were people that made me want to act, not for any reason, just for fun. It was just fun. It was fun to uh, emulate uh, Jim Carrey in like The Mask or Ace Ventura. Uh, who else? Mike Myers, Wayne's World. These were actors, these are films that really did it for me as a kid. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and and the first film I think I was like, I really, really want to be an actor now was Pierce Brosnan, uh, Goldeneye, James Bond, you know. Those sorts of films really had me going. That's just in the film side of it. M musically, it changed every year, and now it's still, uh, you know, John Lennon, George Harrison, the Beatles, obviously. Uh, but I find new heroes every day. So it's, it's exciting, you know, the more and more you learn about stuff. I recently watched uh, Hamilton, the, mu the musical, and I've since then just been obsessed with learning the history of that, which is fun. Um, do you have a hero? Do you have an icon? Uh, so my childhood hero was actually uh, Jack Sparrow. Oh yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, actually, no, not really. No. Well, there we go, we're in the same boat. By the end of today, we'll, we'll find a new one. Thank you so much. Thank you, darling. Gryffindor? <laughs> Next. <laughs> um, uh, I like Harry Potter so much. And oh, I like you like Draco Malfoy, so... <laughs> I'm and kidding. Draco Malfoy. Thank you! <laughs> and can I have a hug of you? Maybe like... God, oh, bloody hell. I never hug Gryffindors, ever. That's it. Hello. Hello. That's the only one, all right? It's tiring getting up and down there. It's getting old. She's sweet. Uh, welcome to Dortmund. Thank you. Good to be here. First time. Um, you are my favorite uh, character in Harry Potter. Cheers. Good taste. And my question is... Uh, what is your favorite uh, movie? Uh, yeah, favorite Harry Potter movie. Uh, favorite movie, probably the sixth one. I like the Half Blood Prince a lot, or you know, or Prisoner of Azkaban, or Goblet. You know, it goes on. Yeah, the books. I like the uh, Chamber of Secrets was my favorite. Thank you. Thank you, darling. Thank you very much. Next one, please. Hello, I'm not very good at English, but um, my question is, what is your first Harry, no, what is your favorite animal? First of all, your English is spectacular. Can we hear a little cheers for the guy there? Thank you. That's much better than my sprachen de uh, I'm English, I'm an idiot, sorry. Uh, my favorite animal, without question, dogs. Yes. I love dogs. I swap you. every single one of you for a dog right now. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I uh, I do. I do. They, they, most dogs are very friendly in nature. There's a phrase that Bill Murray said once, I think, that says, um, "I don't trust a person that doesn't like a dog, but I do trust the dog that doesn't like the person." I think they're uh, they're, they're very good judges of character and yeah. inevitably sweet and loving. Uh, I haven't seen my little one now for it's close to a month and a bit. Yeah, it's a long time, so I miss her greatly. If she could be here now, we'd all be much happier. <laughs> Do you like dogs? Yes, I like dogs. Excellent. Yes. Me and you could be best friends, despite your house choice. Good Lord. And um, can I have a hack of you too? I'm so, darling, I'd love to, but I fear this may cause a bit of a chain reaction. Uh, yes. Okay. It's okay. Sorry, darling. I just... I want to make sure it's everyone okay. gets the answer. Okay. Thank you very much. Next Thank question, you. please. Um, hi. Hi. Um, well, I had a question to you as an actor, and I wanted to know 